And let's go into my message here. Go with me, if you would, to 1 Peter chapter 5. We're going to help you this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, we celebrate uh, the crucifixion of our Lord. We celebrate Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. We're celebrating this month what Christianity is all about. Amen. It really is. And we're so thankful. You can imagine what the disciples felt when Jesus was crucified on that Friday, not knowing Sunday was coming. Now, we all go, what is the the crucifixion? Because you know why? We know the end of the story. You know, we read the back of the book. We win. Amen. But, you know, in the midst of things, we we still need to to recognize and understand the power of the cross and the power of the resurrection. And I think we always need to be reminded of that. That's why I'm so so thankful we do this every year. I'm so thankful that we stir up our our hearts because we need to be reminded, reminded. What did Peter say? He said this to to the people that he wrote his letter to. He said, you know, I'm going to always put you in remembrance. I'm going to always put you in remembrance. Why? Because we can forget. The Bible says in James that if if we forget to look into the perfect law of liberty, we'll forget what manner of man we were. Amen? And we'll forget what we have and who we are. And so sometimes we have to be reminded that there is a God and God's on our side. And I have to be reminded that guess what? God's for you, not against you. Amen? And so right here in 1 Peter chapter 5, uh, uh, let's begin reading verse 6. And I'm just going to share some truths. I'm going to get you to get you to know that God's for you, but you've got to let him work with you. And you've got to let him work for you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And then some of you, you know, I've been doing, a, I'm doing a study just on the side, and I always study way ahead of time, get everything together, and then bring things out to you. But I'm reading several books on the, on the subject of angels and them being ministering spirits for us and figuring out that what we're doing and what we're not doing with them. So that's going to be something, I don't know when I'm going to teach that, but whenever I get it clear, you'll get it. Okay? <laughs> Hallelujah. And the reason being for that is because I'm thoroughly convinced that we're not seeing it enough of them and we're not you know, getting them to do the things they're supposed to do in our lives. Hallelujah. And we're not receiving what we need to have and we need to step it up a little bit here. Amen. That's a whole nother sermon. All right. Here in First Peter chapter 5, verse 6 says, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober and be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. The New Living Translation says this. It says, so humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time he will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and your cares to God, for he cares about you. Stay alert. Watch. Amen. Watch out. Your great enemy, the devil, he prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. So much is here, so many things. First of all, it says that we got to humble ourselves. Amen? See, casting your care unto the Lord and casting your prayer, your life and letting God work with you is humbling yourself knowing that he's got, he's got a better plan, also knowing that he's a lot smarter than you are. Amen? He told us if we'll humble ourselves, he'll exalt us or he'll lift us up in due time. What does that mean? It means God's going to honor you. God's going to lift you up. God's going to help you to make you stand. You know, it's so vital. The the Amplified Bible of this verse is even more, more wonderful. It says this, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that in due time he may exalt you, casting the whole of your care, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all on him. Why? Because he cares for you affectionately, and he cares about you watchfully. And you know, this is a whole lot easier to preach than it is to do. Because the King James Version says, why don't you cast all your care? A lot of people cast some. Some people don't cast none. Because they think if, it, if you walk around life being carefree and, not, and worry-free, what will happen is, is that you'll actually begin to have a whole lot more joy in your life. You'll have a whole lot more peace in your life. And people will think you don't care. You don't care about anything. 
you know. But you, when you walk free from fear and anxiety and worry, hallelujah, glory to God, you're allowing God to work on the situations in your life. Amen. And like I said, it's a whole lot easier to preach it than it is to live it. But the key is, if God told us we can do this, then we can. The key is, is that do we believe what the Word of God says? And do we have an expectancy that when God says it, we're going to receive it? Because yes, we walk by faith. We do. Amen. And we receive things by faith. We act in faith. But you know what? You're supposed to experience the goodness of God. Experience the love of God experience the joy of God. And here's the biggest thing. You're supposed to experience the peace of God. And I know the enemy is always trying to rob your peace. He's always trying to steal your joy. See, you know, every prayer that, that actually is effective has got to be based on the word of God. That's why we, you know, Pastor Pamela was exhorting you that, that we worship God in spirit and in truth because the father seeks such to worship him. Amen. You know, John 17, 17, he said, sanctify them with thy truth. Thy word is truth. And why do we need to know the truth? Because John 8, 32 says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free or set you free. Set you free from what? Set you free from fear. Set you free from worry and anxiety and all the junk that the enemy wants you to look at. See, because fear will strangle your faith. It will. Well, if I don't think about it, if I'm not concerned about it, nobody else, but it won't get none. I, I, I got a witness. You know, this wonderful thing. Well, just delegate. Yeah, you delegate and don't, still don't get none. Then you got to cause more problems, more stress. See, y'all got quiet on that because you take responsibility to it. Hallelujah. But see here, the more that we meditate on the word of God, the more that we allow God, the stronger our faith comes, the stronger the word of God comes on the inside of us. How to, because we've got this image that what God's word says will come to pass in our lives. We have an expectancy. We expect to hear. What would make people bring so much stuff that Moses had to say, stop? You've brought way too much stuff to build this sanctuary. I don't know a building program yet that's got up and said, hey, stop. We have too much money. <laughs> Amen. You know, we got too much. You don't have to give anymore. That, that, that'll be the day and that should be. And I think why don't, our church should be the one to do it so we don't have to do anything. I, I like that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. See, but not only will yes, fear strangles your faith, but faith will strangle fear. It'll stop the things. And I'm going to show you how to do this because why do I think this is so important? I was praying about some things, probably because I had to sign all those contracts in faith. And so I had to, I had to, I had to exercise, I had to get my Bible out, do the word of God, do everything and say, okay, Lord, I believe this is what you're saying to do. Glory to God. And I can't sign God. I have to sign me. <laughs> Amen. That's okay, though. Hallelujah. See, because here's what the enemy would love to do here. The enemy would love. Notice it said that there's an enemy that's seeking whom he may devour. He may. De so how does the enemy have a foothold? What does he do? He tries to get you to worry. Because see, what worry and anxiety and fear does, it disarms you. It disarms you and it, defeats you. it gets you thinking about what he's doing. It gets you thinking about the problems. It gets you thinking about all that's going on instead of thinking about the word of God. See, you know, because when the Word of God tells us what we're supposed to think on, amen? Now, now go with me, if you would, to, to Luke's Gospel, chapter 21. And this is one of the things that started this, you know, it's the things I, I've been reading about stuff. How many know we live in the last days? Yeah. And we are living in the last of the last days. And so when you read about this, and, you know, in, in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, when he's talking about these things and he's speaking about the last days, I think there's a lot of things that we need to, we overlook sometimes. We think, oh, well, that's at that time. Guess what? We're at that time. These apply to us. This is not future. This is now. We are the future, okay? So understand this. Luke uh, 21, 34 out of the King James Version says this. He said, take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down 
with carousing and drunkenness and the cares of this life and that, and that day come on you unexpectedly. Let me read it to you out of, out of the, the New Living Translation. He, said, he says, watch out. Don't let your hearts be dulled by carousing and drunkenness. I mean, just partying, having a good time. And by the worries of this life. Don't let that day catch you unaware. You know, the verse before that says, Jesus said this. He said, heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. So his words are forever. But he's saying right here, I know this is in the day that he's talking about when all this stuff's going to happen. But guess what? It's happening right now. We've got to make sure that we don't let our hearts be dulled by these things. Amen. We got to make sure that we don't allow, uh, we take heed that we don't let our hearts be weighed down. How many you know, yes, there's difficult times. Yes, there's all kinds of craziness going on. But how many you know this is the most exciting time in the world to be alive? That we're about to bring back the king. We're about to bring back Jesus. Hallelujah. And we are the church of this hour. Amen. Hallelujah. We are 11th hour workers. We're going to see God come and we're going to hold fast to the things of God. But we get to prepare, prepare the way for him to come. Amen. Amen. We get to bring back. That's, that's right. Preacher. That's right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It is. Because now here's the thing. Why are we so excited about that? Because we haven't done what we think we should get here on the earth. Everybody's thinking about getting the things. And I'm glad you're thinking about getting the things, but let's go over to Matthew chapter 6 and talk about the things. Amen. So don't get weighed down. Don't get dulled. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, I love the things, but you can't let the things love you. Hallelujah. See, because we miss out on the things of God by being so focused Hallelujah. On all of the problems that's going on. What's thing we take our eyes off of what God is doing? Because God's doing supernatural things. Amen. Lives are being changed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's our heart. You know, in Matthew chapter 6, and we all know this story. We all know Jesus talked about this. But I'm going to read it to you again because, you know, five times in this passage of Scripture, he says, don't worry. Why are you worrying? Don't take word. Let's go. Don't take thought. Amen? Five times. And then he makes a great statement down here because I love it. Hallelujah. So I'm going to read it to you out of the New King James, then I'm going to read it to you out of uh, the New Living. Hallelujah. The New King James says this, Therefore I say, it's starting beginning at verse 25, Matthew 6, 25. Therefore I say to you, don't worry about your life. Whoa. Okay. Everybody take a sea and just think about that. If I don't think about my life, ain't nobody going to think about my life, but that's okay. You can think about it, just don't worry about it. Take no thought, amen, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body. Woo, are we consumed? We got to make sure of this, this, that, and another. How to, or what will you put on? Glory to God. We're not even going to touch that. No touching that. No, nothing there. It is not, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubic to his stature? Amen. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, and they neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Okay. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. So it's not wrong to, to seek the things. It's not wrong to have the stuff. But here's what he said. But that means he's not finished talking. But look what he says here. And we know this, Matthew 6, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. All the things that the Gentiles are seeking after, all the things that the world thinks is all this great. If you'll seek first the kingdom of God, then all these things will be added to you. 
You won't have to find, go out and try to find them. They'll be added to you when you seek first the kingdom of God. Amen? Then he goes on to say, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. All right. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble or its own evil. Wow. We can just take a selah right here. You know what that means when the Bible says selah in your King James Bible? No, the Bible usually says that. It just says take a moment and think about what you just read. Hallelujah. I mean, you got to realize not only is worry useless, amen, but it just messes with you. It messes your mind up. It messes your prayer life up. It just messes your life. It's like riding a, ro- you know, a, a rocking horse. You're thinking you're going to go somewhere. <laughs> amen. It's like, just, it's like, man, you got a lot of motion, but there ain't nothing happening. You know, you think, man, I'm tired. This is really good. But you know what? Hallelujah. You, you're, not, you're not getting anything. And, and it messes up not only that, but it'll mess up your physical well-being. We all know that. It'll mess things up. It'll cause havoc to come. It'll just cause us to uh, 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 just fall back. And be mad. And see, that's the thing about it is that the Satan knows that. He knows that if he can just get you to start thinking and get concerned about some things, if he can get you to get anxious about stuff, what he does is he gets you sidetracked and he gets you off track of, of what you're supposed to be doing, you know, what we're supposed to be handling here. Amen? How we're supposed to do this, how we're supposed to take hold of the word of God. Amen? You know, uh, it's amazing to me is that folks get concerned and they worry about things that they can actually take care of. I never understood that. If you can handle it, handle it, okay? If you can do it, do it. Just do it, you know? Just do it, you know? It's like, that's like somebody saying, I want y'all to pray, you know, that, you know, that I'll, I'll do the thing that I know God wants me to do. Well, you know, it's like if he wants you to do it and it's, it's in your cave, but just do it. But the thing about it is, is that we worry about things that we can't handle. Or we worry about things that are for the future. Amen? Yeah, but what if this happens? What if they do this? What if this happens? What if this happens? You know, if you live your life with the what ifs, you're going to be in big trouble. You'll never, you'll be like the person in Proverbs that the Bible says he never goes out to sow. He never does anything because he says there's lions in the street or he says it's raining or he says it's this. He always has an excuse of why he doesn't work. Amen. Now, none of you are like that, but the kids, you know people like that. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know? But why don't we cast our care? Why don't we do what the Bible says? Go to Philippians, if you would, chapter 4 with me. Go to Philippians chapter 4. I know I didn't read that out of the New Living, but I, I did, it was just so good there. We didn't have to. Okay? Amen. Go to Philippians chapter 4 with me. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I mean, the Bible says in, in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, especially in the Amplified Bible, it says that this, it says, God said, I will never leave you. He said, I will not, I will not, I will not forsake you. I won't leave you hopeless. I, 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 I won't leave you without support. I will in no degree leave you helpless. I will not forsake you. I will not let you down. I will not relax my hold on you. Assuredly not. God's endeavoring to say to us, listen, I can't get more than this. It's just like also, you know, in Hebrews uh, chapter 6 and verse 18 when it says, I'm going to swear by me and I'm going to give you my oath and my word and my promise because there's nobody greater than me. That's why when we go in to tell the truth, we're supposed to put our right hand on a Bible. I don't even know if they do that anymore. But so you, you swallow them yourself or you put your left hand up, whatever, whichever way you do that. You know, I solemnly swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God kind of thing. And uh, you want to tell the truth. Why? Because you're swearing to God that you're going to tell the truth. Amen? Well, God said, there's nobody greater than me, so I'll just swear by myself. Okay? This is what we're going to do. And, and he said that he'd never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He won't lose his grip on you. He'll be there. But why don't we cast our cares on him? Because we don't trust him. I mean, it, it, that sounds harsh, but it's not harsh. It's simply you don't trust him. You don't think he's able to take care of it when he said he would. Amen. You know, I mean, Abraham was fully satisfied and he was fully persuaded that what God said, God was able to do. You remember that? He was fully persuaded that what God said he was able to do. 
Amen. How many of you know that God said it, he'll, he'll bring it to pass? If God said it, he'll do these things, he'll bring it to pass. You know, one of the biggest problems that we have, too, with, with our lives is that we think God gets tired of hearing us. Oh, it's quiet in this place. I go to God and say, it's me again, God. It's me again. It's me again. It's me again. I'm coming back. It's me again. Daniel kept praying and praying and talking to God. And when the angel came down, he said, oh, Daniel, oh, man of desire. You look up that word and look up the things. He says, oh, Daniel, you're keeping me busy. You keep asking and asking and asking. And God keeps answering and answering and answering. And that's why God told him what was going to happen at the end of the age and told him about the seven. He gave him all this stuff. He says, and Daniel, he says, Daniel reading the Bible, he'd say, wait a minute. We're supposed to be free. 70 years. We've already been here 70 years. How come we're not free? How come we're not delivered? Wait, wait a minute. Jeremiah said it was only 70 years. So Daniel says, hey. He said himself. Yeah, he said himself to pray. Put on sackcloth and ashes. He said, hey. You up there. We're supposed to be delivered. I know why we're not. So I'm going to repent for the nation. And I'm going to pray for our nation. I'm asking, but God, you said through the prophet, your prophet said, hallelujah, that we're supposed to be delivered. That we're supposed to be delivered. And you remember what happened. That's, you know, three weeks later, the angel shows up and the angel says, Daniel, your prayer was heard the minute you said it. But the prince of Persia withstood me. And when I got, but he says, hey, here's the thing. Here's what happened is that, but the minute you heard it, I was sent. The minute you pray, God was sent. The minute that you decided that, God, I'm going to get you on my thing, you sent. You're coming. You're moving. The enemy might try to be stopping things, but God, you're moving. You're doing this. Amen? Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that God put his you know, word on paper so you could know his character? Because you know who he is. So I said, well, God's not talking. Read your Bible and God will be talking to you. Read your Bible for an hour and God talked to you for an hour. Amen. Get a hold of the word of God. Get to do this. Have you found Philippians chapter four? Now this is how we cast our cares. This is how we give these things to God. Why is it so important? Listen, we cannot fix the world. Sorry. You're not going to make this world perfect. We're not going to have this great thing. You're not going to have a majority of folks. Sorry to burst your bubble, but it's not going to get any better until Jesus comes and then the tribulation shows up and then Jesus comes back and rules and reigns for a thousand years. I don't care what you're hearing or what you're doing. You know, we are at the end of the age and what we're doing here. That doesn't mean that the church is not going to be blessed. That doesn't mean there's not going to be thousands of people get born again and hundreds. I mean, the, the, the harvest is ripe for harvest. They need to know the things of God. Amen. But they also need to know that Jesus is coming. Amen? They need to know that. It's the signs of the time. It is what it is. And we need to see this. It's not going to be changed back into something. You're not going to see the glory days. But you are going to see the glory. And we're not trying to get a new revival. We're trying to stay in the revival and keep it going. and keep, We're going to go out in, in a blaze of, of glory and the fire of God. Amen. And we're going to keep digging in. We're going to keep moving. And God's going to do supernatural things. He's going to cause his church to arise. He really is. But we need to understand that because if we're trying to think we can fix the world and we're going to get this and we're going to have a th- take over the world. Man, we're just trying to get sanity in, in places. We're just trying to stop, you know, just take authority over the enemies that are trying to, you know, bombard. Amen? Hallelujah. We're just trying to get something in that. But here's the thing about God is, is with us. He's for us. Here's what he said in, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. He said, and I'm going to read this to you out of the Amplified, okay? These, 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 this whole thing, verses 6 through 9. He said, uh, <clears throat> don't fret. Or have any anxiety about anything. That means don't worry about anything. But in every circumstance and in everything, by prayer and petition, definite request with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God. And God's peace shall be yours. That tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ. 
And so fearing nothing from God and being content with its earthly lot of whatever sort that is, that peace which transcends all understanding shall garrison and mount guard over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. He goes on to say here in verse 8, For the rest, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is worthy of reverence and is honorable and seemingly whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely and lovable, whatever is kind and winsome and gracious, if there is any virtue and any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on and weigh and take account of these things. Fix your mind on them. Practice what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and model your way of living on it. And the God of peace, of untroubled, undisturbed well-being will be with you. Now, let me read to you the new living here just so just it'll help you. He says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need, <clears throat> excuse me, and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience. Everybody say experience. experience. Man, do we need experience. It says experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true, honorable, right, and pure, and lovely, and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise and keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. Remember this, PST. We all need to have some PST, not PTSD, (laughs) not trauma. And I'm not making fun of that because there are a lot of people that can happen in a lot of areas, a lot of ways. There can be all things. No, but we need some PST. So what in the world is PST, Pastor? It's prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. You need some PST. I like acronyms because, you know, I have 40 years of cassette tapes in my hallway right now of all the different camp meetings and, and winter Bible seminars and ministers meetings from uh, 1978 until 2003. And so we're, we're actually putting them on my computer and uh, things that, are, that, that aren't there that wasn't. So I'm, I'm, uh, I got a wonderful guy named Greg who's awesome. And he's doing all this. So we're getting all this together because uh, the funny thing about them is that these cassette tapes were in a barn in a filing cabinet for the last 20 some years and they still work uh which is amazing because it's you know you know how hot it gets in california and everything so i dug them out and i was gonna throw them away but uh because we needed a filing cabinet so i was gonna give one my son that's why i got dug out that's why this all happened but the reason that i that i share that is that when when you are getting these things together is that all i have to do is He'll say, well, you want to look at the ones and see this. So I look at this and I say, listen, when I look at the title, I can remember the service from 40 years ago. And I praise God for it. I can say, well, this is what this tape's about. This is what he said. This is what he's doing. This is his examples he used. Because all I have to do is have a PST. I just have to have an acronym of what's said. And uh, and I thank God for that. I thank God that I have that ability to do that so I know which one and what he said and how he did it, you know, and what I want to get off of that tape or what I want to get off of that. So it's, it's good to say, okay, we don't have to do all 30 or 40 of them. We can do 15 or 20. But why is PST so important? Because through prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving is how you give everything to God. First of all, prayer is saying, Lord, here it is. Here's the situation. And when you honor God. And why is, why is supplication different than prayer? Paul said in Ephesians, he said, through prayer and supplication, pray for all the saints. Because supplication is something that most people don't even know what it is. People have a little bit about intercession. They jump over there, which is praying in, in, in the space for somebody else, and interceding for something, and interceding again. Supplication is for you. And supplication is also for the saints. But supplication is a heartfelt that you actually mean what you mean. How many of you know that casting your care on the Lord doesn't do any good unless you mean it? Unless you give it from your heart. Unless you truly believe that, okay, 
Because how many of the first time you let your kids drive? Shut up about that. By themselves, and they left the park, and you're like, oh, no. <laughs> there was divine intercession and supplication. There was a heartfelt prayer going on there. Oh, God. <laughs> Amen. And there was some sincerity. There was, you were sincere. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All of us had that one child that we were like, oh, Lord, don't. <laughs> we did. We did. It was like, oh. You just, you're like, Lord, please help. But what it means is that you pour your heart out. See, a lot of people say, okay, Lord, I'm going to cast this care and I want you to do something. Go, go. And then we, you know, talk to God about it, but then we pick it back up and, and they say, okay, now I'm going to figure out how do I do this? Because it was just you kind of getting, getting, relieving the pressure of your mind. Well, I talked to God about it. Well, the Bible doesn't say you talk to God. Prayer is not talking to God about things. Prayers go and having a dialogue with God and, and living and sharing and saying, God, this is what it is with the word of God. So it's, and giving it to God. So I got to give it to you. And when the devil comes down and says, well, you got to do it. He's, you know, it's going to be too late. God's going to be too late. He's not going to answer that. He said, no, no, no. I trust him. I trust him. I mean, how many have that one friend or one person you can actually trust? If they say they're going to do something, they actually do it. Amen. Guess what? God's more trustworthy than they are. Amen? See, it's God's divine orders that we pray first, we have supplication, and then with thanksgiving, we thank God that he's actually doing something. We've got PST, which means we have prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. We're allowing God to be God, and we're fixing our mind on the word of God, and it's true about what God said about the situation, and we're honoring him, and we're thinking and praising him, saying, Lord, I'm going to trust you. Because they're, in, they're in, you know, we're in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, in the King James Version, where it, it says, think on these things, you know, that have virtue and have praise. And that word virtue means life. So if your thoughts and what you're thinking on, you, you know you've cast your care over to the Lord when you have peace. And you're not trying to take it back. So, so what happens if the devil gives it back? You just keep casting it to the Lord. The devil just gives you an opportunity to pray about it and talk about it, talk to the God about it, say, hey. You know, and then pretty soon you, when the devil brings that picture up and he brings that thought, you say, devil, just go talk to God. He's got it. I'm not worried about it. He's got it. He's handling it. He's not doing anything. He's doing everything. He's got it under control. Amen. Amen. So you got to keep on casting till you're free. Amen. But when it talks about virtue of praise, if it doesn't bring life to you and praise unto God, it's not fit for your thought life. If it doesn't bring life to you, if it doesn't bring life and peace to you and, and, and praise unto God, it's not fit for your thinking. you got to ask yourself, if what I'm thinking on, does it bring life to me and praise unto God? It's not fit for my thought life. I'm not supposed to think about that. I'm supposed to think on things that are lovely and pure and just and honest and of a good report. And if there be any virtue and there be any praise, think on these things. And the only thing you can think on to do that is the Word of God. That's why you put the Word of God. You replace you replace. Amen? Amen? This is why you just want me to go around thinking about the Bible. Do you have any yeah, I, I sure do. I sure do. All right, quickly, go with me over to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and we'll, and we'll wind this thing up. We won't close, but we'll wind it up here. Hallelujah. We're going to close, I think. Pretty good. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Amen? Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Verse 3 says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. It says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Wow. Isn't that awesome? I mean, I'm so thankful for that. Hallelujah. The New Living Translation says this. We are humans, but we do not wage war as humans do. Aren't you glad that we don't have to wage war as humans? We don't have to fight in the flesh. We don't have to earn it. Amen. Hallelujah. The King James says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Amen. And being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. The New Living says this. It says, we use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. Hallelujah. 
and all these rebellious thoughts. Amen. Aren't you glad you can bring every thought you can bring into captivity? Hallelujah. And if you can control your thoughts, praise God, you can control your faith. And if you control your faith, you'll control your destiny. Because the devil always wants to, to, to get, and he's get us to thinking these things. And what we have to do is, no, we have to think God's thoughts. We have to put ourselves in remembrance of what God says. Amen. And here's the thing. If you just try to suppress your fears, if you say, well, I just won't think about it. I just won't act. I'm just not going to deal with that. You're going to be defeated your whole life. You got to face your fears. You got to stand up, take the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Because the only way you're going to get rid of them is by casting your cares over them. The only way you're going to get rid of them is by taking the word of God and coming against them. Amen. Taking authority over things. Hallelujah. You've got to come to the place where, okay, I'm not going to allow this, you know. How do, I, how do I do that? I replace these thoughts with faith thoughts. I replace this thought with the word of God. I bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and Christ is the word, so I bring every thought. Hallelujah. Do you ever watch people and you see people and say, you probably had to go up and say, is what you're thinking on bringing life to you? And pretty soon they go, I don't even know what I'm thinking on. Yeah. You know, people say things and you should ask them this. Do you actually really believe what you just said? What I say? What did I say? Because <laughs> most of the time we curse ourselves. Now, lest you think this is an impossibility, it's not. You can walk worry-free. You can walk carefree. So then, that doesn't mean that you're not thinking about things to do. That doesn't mean you're not planning for the future. It doesn't mean that you're not budgeting or you're not doing things because that brings life to you so that you actually have planned things out. It simply means you're not worried about your plan and you're not worried about the success of that because that's up to God because you're honoring God. Hallelujah. You're keeping the word of God. Hallelujah. You know, and allowing the word of God to be that which brings life to you. Amen? We have to do that. We just have to tell, no fear, I resist it. Because God's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And if you don't remember anything else, remember this. I'm going to get a little phrase here. This is the phrase I wrote down. PST, hallelujah, is the way to peace. There's no shortcuts. Prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, that's the way to peace. There's no shortcuts. So if I don't have peace, it's because I haven't prayed and I haven't earnestly prayed about it. I haven't given my heart, haven't hooked my heart. I've prayed about it. Oh, prayed for No, but I haven't taken all that. Went to God the right way. And I haven't cast my care over unto him and I haven't allowed God to work with it. Amen. You got to have God to work with it. Amen. Because we've got to believe that when we fix our mind on the word of God, we believe that what God says about that situation is true, not what the enemy is saying. And so we say, no, no, God's got it. He's got it. God loves me. He's got my best interest at heart. God's going to do what he said he's going to do. God's great. Hallelujah. And here's the thing. If you have such a struggle, say, Man, I'm reminded. listen, just meditate on the goodness of God and the faithfulness of God because he's faithful. Amen. Amen. Just saying, you know what, Lord, you're good. You said you'd never leave me. Lord, I'm trusting you. I trust you. And you know, it's an amazing thing of what he'll do. He'll always come through for you. Amen. He'll always come through. Yes, we have to bring into captivity our minds because our mind is, is, is the battlefield of what goes on. And guess what? The enemy is going to say things. You're going to hear things and say things. Everything's going to say, ah, oh, everything's horrible. But it's not horrible. Everything's glorious. Everything's glory. Everything's powerful. Why? Because the church is still here. We're still here. And when you wake up and you're breathing, you go, glory to God. The promises of God are still yes and amen. Because that means the world is framed by the word of God. So when you get up and the world's still here, God's promises are still here. God's words. Because see, when you wake up and the world ain't here, then you can have some problems, okay? But when you wake up, hallelujah, and the world is still here, you go, God's promised it. Because God said he spoke the world into being. God's holding the world, the Bible says. And we believe what the word of God says. Amen. We do believe the word is the final authority in our lives. We do. And then you can have joy and you can have peace in the midst of things. In the midst of it. Amen. We have to do that. We have to be ready to do that. And we have to believe God that he'll do it for us and he'll make a way. Because here's something you need to understand. Just because you know how faith works doesn't mean you know how God's going to do it. 
And you need to meditate on that because many times we, we, we know, you know, how this, we got this formula. We got this Mark 11, 23 and 24 formula. But faith's not a formula. Amen. Faith's not a formula. People want to make it that. We break it down to help you do things. But faith is a relationship. Faith. I have faith in someone, not in something. I have faith in the Word of God, and the Word of God is Christ, and I have faith in Christ. I have faith in what He did. I have faith in what the Holy Spirit's doing. I have faith in what my Father's doing. Glory to God. I'm one of His favorite. Amen. Amen. And you're His favorite. And, and I'm thoroughly convinced if we don't learn how to let God move on, on some of the, the things that we're doing here, and that's what's holding back. Some of you, it's holding back your, your, your prosperity. It's holding back uh, your healings. It's holding back a lot of things you know, because you're still trying to figure out how to do it. And you're still trying to figure out how to get God to do it. Listen, we are not trying to get anything from God. We're not trying to get anything from God. You can't earn it. You can't get it. You can receive everything from God. You can receive it because it's a gift. It's what God gives to us, what Jesus has already provided. But if you're trying to get healing, you missed it. If you're trying to get prosperity, you missed it. If you're trying to get joy, you missed it. If you're trying to get deliverance, you missed it. You don't get it because if you get it, then you got it. You did it. You earned it. You did it. And then you didn't need God. But if you receive it, God did it all. Jesus paid the price for it all. And I just received my healing. I received my deliverance. I received the prosperity of God walking. I received the peace of God. I received the joy of God that God, Jesus has already given. I receive that. I take it because it's mine because he gave it to me. It's all a free gift. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, I don't know about you, but I preach me happy. So we're good. (laughs) Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you. We just love you and praise you and thank you, Lord, because you're such a good God. Father, thank you for these wonderful folks that are here and the wonderful folks that are watching. Lord, they're so precious. They're so wonderful. They just draw and they draw on the things of God. And Lord, so right now, we know that the greatest gift of all is Jesus. And we receive him as our Lord and Savior. That's the greatest gift. Because when we receive him, we receive salvation. We receive healing. We receive joy. We receive peace. Nothing compares to receiving Jesus Christ as our Lord and as our Savior. Father, if there's anyone here under the sound of my voice, here or watching, if they don't know you, I want them to know you. I want them to have a revelation of you. So if there's anybody here, Father, any, I don't care whether, it's not about joining the church. It's about being a born-again Christian. It's about joining the family of God. We love you. God loves you so much. And if you're here and say, Pastor, I need Jesus. I want to be born again for the first time. Or I want to come back to God. I, I want to rededicate my life. I, my life's been a mess and I want to come home. Just raise your hand real high. Let me pray. Let's pray for you. The Bible says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you shall be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. He loves you. He cares for you. Amen. God loves you. Hallelujah. Amen. His hand is upon you. Father, I just thank you for this congregation. I thank you for these and people watching. Father, let us be lights in this dark world. Father, send us. You said, pray ye therefore, Lord, the Lord of the harvest, that you would send laborers into your harvest. So, Father, I'm asking you to send us all as laborers into your harvest. There are those, the people that we can minister to. And, Father, thank you for the peace that passes all understanding that guards the hearts of minds and people this morning. Let them know that when they come to their wits end, they go, I don't know what. They can cast their care on. They can say, Father, here, I need your help. I need you. This I need to give this. Father, I need to just trust you. Father, thank you that they can trust you. Oh, we love you, Lord. We love you and praise you. Thank you, Father, for this season, this resurrection season. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It is. It's all about the resurrection. Thank you, Father. And Lord, we thank you as we look and we see what Jesus did for us, that we can be reminded that it's an empty tomb. We be reminded, hallelujah, 
Glory to God that he has risen and he has risen indeed. So, Lord, thank you for that. Father, as we go this way, I ask you to, I just, I just ask you to just touch each and every life, traveling mercies with them. Father, just let your hand be upon them. Let the peace that passes all understanding guard their hearts and minds. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you. Thank you, thank you for touching their lives. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.